Welcome back to the shop. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to change worn out spark plugs on your car or truck just using some basic hand tools. If your engine's misfiring, feeling sluggish, or you're just plain due for a tune-up, bad spark plugs could be the culprit. So let's get started. All right, first things first, the tools that we need for the job are gonna be some spark plug sockets. Depending on your vehicle, most common is this 5A style right here. We're gonna need a ratcheting wrench, a couple of sockets to remove the coil packs and intake manifold, a pick or a flat-headed screwdriver just to help with some of those stubborn connectors just to get them to pop off, a torque wrench to make sure those spark plugs are nice and tight in the cylinder heads and not over torqued, compressed air or some vacuum just to get those spark plug holes cleaned out so we don't drop anything into those cylinders. Now this vehicle uses iridium spark plugs so the spark plug gap tool isn't necessarily needed here because they come pre-gapped and you really don't want to damage the tip on those. However, if you have a copper plug or anything on that sort, sometimes you will need to re-gap them. But it is good to just check these iridium plugs to make sure the tips aren't smashed. Now the vehicle that I'm changing the spark plugs on is a 2017 Toyota Sienna van and these are iridium spark plugs. So just take a good note and make sure that nothing is damaged on the tip here because we don't want to install a faulty part. Now this vehicle has an intake plenum that goes over the top of the back cylinder head so you have to remove that to get access to those spark plugs so we have another gasket to replace that as well. And last up I am replacing one ignition coil in the back because that one is acting up and the vehicle was misfiring and this is the culprit right here due to the worn out spark plugs. Now, it is important to note that spark plugs are a wear item, so always consult your owner's manual to make sure that the spark plugs are done on time. And before we begin, make sure the engine is cooled down so you don't risk burning yourself on a hot engine. Now to begin, we gotta remove this top engine cover so we can gain access to the spark plugs. Once that's removed, you can see the ignition coils that house the spark plugs, and we have a lot of debris and buildup from stuff that's been pushed up underneath the engine cover that needs to be vacuumed up. Now we can also use a little compressed air to blow some of that debris out of the way. Also blow some of the stuff off the intake as well. And now we can move on to removing the ignition coils. Now you can see these connectors are a little bit stubborn and this is where you can use your pick or a flat headed screwdriver to help pull up on those connectors and pry them apart. Be careful not to pry too hard because we don't want to break the connectors. Now we can loosen all the bolts for the coil packs. And then one by one take those bolts out by hand and remove the coil packs. And great. It's important to note that not every vehicle is going to be equipped with a coil on plug ignition system. They might actually be equipped with the old spark plug wire style ignition system. But regardless, all these will be the same to gain access to the spark plug. Now with the coil packs removed, we want to use compressed air to blow up those spark plug tubes to prevent any debris from falling down into the cylinders when we remove the spark plugs. Then one by one, we can continue to remove the spark plugs and then set them aside once they're removed. With the front three spark plugs now removed, it's always smart to just take a really good detailed look at the spark plug itself because that will tell you a lot about the condition of the engine. Sometimes if you see a lot of stuff built up, it could be that the engine is actually burning some oil or potentially coolant. And in this case, it just looks like they're pretty worn out, just age itself. You can see there's some carbon buildup right here. You can see there's a little bit of excess like feel. It's a little damp right here, which just kind of indicates that this thing probably is just starting to wear out. Again, get a good visual at the tip of the spark plug that enters the engine, because that will tell a lot about the condition. Before reinstalling the new spark plugs, take a good look at the electrode at the top to make sure it's not damaged from shipment, and then we can reinstall into the cylinder. Make sure you thread these in by hand so we prevent any cross threading or damage to the cylinder head threads because that would be a very costly repair. Once the spark plugs are hand tight, you can now use a torque wrench set to the OEM manufacturer specification, and in this case is 13 foot pounds. We're not to over torque these because we don't want to strip the threads out. And now once everything's torqued up, we can begin to install the coil packs one by one. Make sure you're firmly pressing down on the coil pack to make sure that boot is nicely seated down onto the spark plug. Now we could reinstall the fasteners, then the electrical connections one by one. Now the front spark plugs are complete and now we need to gain access to the rear spark plugs which requires us to remove the air box. And make a mental note of any vacuum hoses or connections that you need to take off so you can remember to reinstall those. Now this one requires you to remove the throttle plate so we're going to do that here and just 10 millimeter bolts and we'll set that aside. Now we can remove the plenum bolts up on top just from 12 millimeter bolts and we're going to get this electrical connector right up on top here set that aside. Now I need to position the plenum to the side because there's some vacuum hoses located on the back that we don't want to damage. And now it's a smart time to put some rags over the top of the open intake runner so we don't risk dropping something in there and possibly damaging the engine. And with those rear hoses removed we can remove the plenum. Now we have this intake plenum removed so we can change the gasket since it's out and these were the vacuum lines and hoses in the back that I had to get off 
So I had to move the thing to the side and that's how you get to that access. Now this gasket replacement is very simple. You can just take a pick and actually this little silicone mold right here goes out to the side and it'll simply just pull on up, ditch the old, and then reinstall the new. And make sure you're going over everything firmly, press it in nice and tight, and staying in place everywhere it should be. Then our new gasket is installed. And with the plenum removed, we can gain access to those rear coil packs so we can get access to those spark plugs. Just like the front bank, we're gonna remove fasteners one by one to get the coil packs out using some compressed air now to blow those tubes out to make sure there's no debris in there. And then we can use a mirror to just verify there's no debris left in those spark plug tubes. And repeating the same process that we did in the front bank, removing the plugs one by one, taking a look at the condition of each spark plug, making sure there's no buildup or deposit. And now that we have cylinder number five out, you can see this spark plug is actually damp with fuel and this is definitely the culprit of our misfire. And now after verifying all the new spark plugs look good, we can install those by hand one by one like we did for the front and then torquing with a torque wrench. And again, remember not to over torque these because we do not want to strip out these cylinder heads because that is a very, very costly repair. Now we can begin to reinstall the coil packs one by one and then put those in position, making sure they're fully seated down onto the spark plugs. And then we are going to replace that cylinder number five coil pack that was misfiring with a brand new coil pack. So this one will be out with the old and then in with the new. Now with all the rear coil packs in position, we can begin to tighten those fasteners. And again, we're just snugging up these fasteners. We don't want to over torque these either because we don't want to cause any damage. Now we can remove our little placement here with our rags. And we're also going to clean the top of that intake manifold just to make sure it's a nice clean mating surface. So when we reinstall the plenum, it's going to be a nice tight seal. Now we can reinstall this plenum, but make sure we're always paying attention to all the things that we took off. These electrical connections, and then these vacuum hoses in the back that need to be reinstalled, because if we don't reinstall them, we're gonna have issues. Now I can put the plenum off to the side so I can reach back there and get those vacuum hoses hooked back up and then position it in place and set the plenum down onto the intake manifold and then one by one put the connections and vacuum hoses back in its original spots. All the fasteners can now be reinstalled in the intake plenum to the manifold hand tighten so we don't strip anything out. And once we snug up all the bolts by hand, we can take out the old torque wrench and we can apply the proper torque to each fastener, making sure it's nice and sealed tight. Now with the plenum torque down, we can go ahead and reinstall that throttle body with those 10 millimeter fasteners. And we're just gonna use this by hand as well. And once we get these all snugged up, we can move along to installing the air box once again. Now I can install the snorkel tube right here, put the fasteners into place, the vacuum hoses back into the retainers. Our air box can now be reinstalled back into its position. Connecting that mass airflow sensor so we don't forget that. Pushing it back down and getting the clips right onto that air filter box. Hooking up the vacuum hoses one by one. And then we can tighten down the snorkel clamp. Now the engine cover can be reinstalled. And there we have it. All the spark plugs have now been replaced. And in the case of this vehicle, we did have an engine misfire. So we need to double check the check engine light and verify that the misfire is now gone. Now with the vehicle running, I can feel it running much smoother. And we have the check engine light that we have to clear the code. So let's scan quick and clear the codes. All right, and here was the previous codes, the rough idling, the detection of the misfire, and then cylinder number five detection misfire. So now we're gonna clear the DTCs and the race is now done. And you can see now our check engine light has been removed. And now that we've cleared the check engine light, we can quick shut the hood and take it for a quick test drive and verify there's no more misfires. And then we can wrap this thing up and be on our way. Now I'm back from the test drive, no more misfiring. All the spark plugs have been changed, the one ignition coil, and the thing is running like a champ again. And if this helped, like, subscribe, and then comment on problems that you're having with your cars below and maybe I can make a future video on. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.